Hi everyone. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to come on and say I wish you the most amazing 2023 and on. I want to thank you for supporting me through the year. I know I don't show my face very often, but I will try and do that more often in the coming year. Um, I think we are going to have a very interesting 2023. I think that obviously there is a lot of good and bad that we can expect. Um, we have very intense astrology this year, the most intense astrology since 2020. Um, but we have some really good things happening as well. For example, we have Jupiter now in Aries starting a brand new cycle around the zodiac. So it's a brand new beginning for everyone really. Um, if you think about your life in the last 12 years, Jupiter will have come kind of full circle for you from your house of Aries to where it is now again. It's bringing gift, lots of blessings. It's bringing um, growth opportunities and it's also bringing wisdom. So you can look at that house um, and that is also the house where the North Node will be moving into in the middle of the year, um, bringing more connections and moving us more towards that independence in that area. But before I get to that, that's the one very positive thing as well. But we also have the Uranus Saturn square that we've had all of last year, the previous year as well, that's been very frustrating, keeping us very blocked or um, restricted in some way in our lives. So in some area of your life, you felt um, frustrated, blocked, like you can't move enough. There's, no, there, there, there's somewhere where you need more freedom, more flexibility, maybe a pattern you needed to break away from or a person or a job or wanted to make a move you couldn't make or whatever it may have been for you. It could even have been something very personal and internal for you. That square is now moving into a sextile this year, which is so much more harmonious. And it's, it's going to, and this is happening in March. So if there's those things that you really want to make um, happen this year, that you really want to forward now, you want to wait till around that time to really move it forward. And so that's a really positive, wonderful thing. So there's a release there. There's a breakthrough there. We also have a Mars retrograde right now. Also, of course, till the middle of January, which is really helping us to think where we are putting our energy. Is it worth it? Um, what are we passionate about? Are we working smartly? Um, you know, and really um, reassessing. Um, what is worth our energy as well and also dealing with our self-control and anger issues that we may have could be coming up at this time in that area for your life um, but really we have so much happening this year it's a very intense year we will have um, eclipses in the taurus and scorpio axis as well as the Aries and Libra axis, because the nodes will be moving into Aries and Libra in the middle of the year. So as, as well as all the financial changes that'll be happening in the world and the war and peace energies that we have, this will continue because um, both Taurus and Scorpio, as well as Aries and Libra are ruled by Mars and Venus. So it's definitely an energy exchange moving from fixed to cardinal energy, from earth to, to fire and from water to air, but um, it's still dealing with balance. It's still dealing with war and peace. It's still dealing with relationships. So we're still going to have a lot of relationship things to deal with, money, balance, all of that. Um, me versus you and so forth. So um, just continue with the work and the healing and the forgiving. Um, Saturn will be moving into Pisces, of course, as well. And this can bring up a lot of water issues, um, but it's really a sign of release and endings. So it's really a time to really purify and detox and detox your lymphatic system and really focus on what you put into your body and what you are feeding yourself and nutrifying yourself with. 
okay, and staying away from anything that's um, deceptive. But we also have Pluto dipping its toe into Aquarius this year. So we will have it for a short period until it permanently moves into the sign of Aquarius around 2024. But we will get an idea of what that transit could bring for us. And um, so that will be very interesting as well to see. It gives us a bit of foreshadowing there as well. But I think especially that this uh, there's a fire in our belly this year with the north node moving into aries so we're becoming more assertive we're standing up for our rights we're fighting for our freedoms um, we are going to want to take more charge of our lives and initiate those changes that we want to make that we've been waiting to make um, we're going to be more self-confident we're going to tap into that sense of self what makes us tick uh, where do you know where do we want to focus our energy on and um, especially now with this Mars retrograde we've been given opportunity to really see where we want to put our energy and who we want to put our energy towards as well and um, so they say where your focus goes um, your energy flows so it's important this year to see where your focus is and where it needs to be and to focus on fully being your authentic self and expressing yourself and standing up for yourself and your rights and your freedoms. So we are moving forward this year. We are changing. Oh yes, and the Mercury retrogrades are all in all Earth signs this year. Um, at least the first three of them. The last one I'm not really spending too much time on right now because it's at the really, really end of the year. So to me, it's kind of more into next year. Um, but I would say... It's all happening in Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. So we're dealing with practical solutions in our everyday lives, in our everyday structures and material worlds around us. So we're making changes, we're initiating, and we are standing up for ourselves and being assertive. So this is wonderful. So I recommend really purifying your thoughts, really um, getting clear on what it is that you desire and where you want to take your life. How are you going to create the life that you want? Um, it starts, of course, by accepting that which we cannot control and surrendering the rest to God. It also starts with accepting responsibility for the reality in our lives that we have created and um, forgiving, letting go and taking control of what we can and not and realizing that we cannot control others or what they decide taking control of what we can in a healthy and balanced way and making choices moving forward practical solutions moving forward so i wish you the best most curious and wonderful 2023 May the sun shine bright on you this day. May there be blessings coming your way. Until next time. Bye-bye. Welcome Sagittarius Rising. This is your 2023 Astrology Horoscope Potentials. Now, Pluto has been in your second house of Capricorn since 2008. Now, Pluto usually begins by breaking down the area of life it moves through and then rebuilds it transformed and renewed and aligned with your truth. Now, the area of life that Pluto moves through will bring power and control issues into your awareness you will relearn and redo power and control in that area of your life that you've been passing through. And what, when Pluto is completely passed through that area, um, it will be completely transformed. And this has been since 2008 for you. So it's been a 14 year journey in the area of your values, income, as well as your self-worth. Now with Pluto here, for this long transit, you may have found that you are becoming more aware of the spiritual and psychological values of life rather than the material. 
You may purge and purify your possessions and you can have a complete transformation here regarding your finances. At first, this could have been a breakdown in your job, in your marriage or family in some way, in your business. And it may have allowed you to powerfully transform and rebuild this area of life. Maybe you acquired new skills and talents or found talents that you hid from yourself. There can be changes here in investments, work, property, what you earn, what you say and how you use your voice. Whatever needs to go with this transit needs to go. So it's important to not hang on to things. You may find that spiritual values outweigh the material by the end of this transit and that your moral values and self-worth and self-confidence and self-respect um, are more important than the size of your house or bank account or who you're married to and what you own. So your value is not ba based on these things or what title you have. Um, less is more. And the lesson here is that only our inner values is within our control. Now, Pluto will ingress your third house of Aquarius on the 23rd of March for a brief stay, moving in and out of Capricorn and Aquarius until it's permanent stay by the end of 2024. But for now, we can get a taste of what this could bring. Now, Pluto will be in this area of your chart for about 20 years. So this is a long transit where Pluto works through this area, purifying it. Now, it's ingressing your area of communications, your mind, technology, schedules, appointments, language, your neighborhood, your neighbors, your siblings, your friends, um, your immediate environment, short courses or training on the job or learning, commute, getting around in your neighborhood. <clears throat> now with Pluto here, you may find that at times everyday conversations may get heavier or mentally you have to deal with a lot um, or much more controlling and obsessive thoughts, possibly sexual as well, or about money or making money. Possibly you would be transforming your ideas of making money, checking out different avenues, even online for potentials. This is a period where you may have had much or where you can have much outside everyday events affect you internally quite strongly, changing you. Repressed psychological issues could have um, could be a trigger during this time in order for you to deal with them. Some may have an experience or experiences um, that change how they commute. Maybe you always took the bus and during Pluto's transit now you're deciding to get your driver's license and start driving or maybe the reverse. You may be dealing with more powerful people during this time in your everyday life conversations, meetings, or you may find that someone or an everyday event has a deeply emotionally effect on you, activating something inside of you, you know, a very strong effect and how you experience things. You could become much more curious and interested about taboo topics or keep some of your conversations or communications more private you could become more interested in astrology or metaphysics. Maybe you have to keep it on the lowdown because it's not accepted by those around you. But Pluto here will assist with deep thinking and research. You would be able to understand topics you may not normally understand. You could struggle with OCD tendencies or being too stuck in a routine. So it's important to remain flexible and see when you're kind of crossing the line too much. In some cases, this can indicate criminal activity in the neighborhood, a death or the destruction or destruction and rebuilding of structures in your area of living or commute. By the end of Pluto's transit in this area, you will have possibly gone through a very intense mental overhaul, 
a, a self-questioning period, researching facts and ideas that you once held true, which may have undermined you. You may have needed to learn to become less controlling and more flexible in order to flow more and not be as rigid and separate or callous, but to open your mind more and realize you do not know it all. You will not take as much for granted after this transit and your relationship with your neighbors and siblings and your everyday people could change permanently. The power of the mind can affect every single cell in our bodies. So let's use it wisely and positively. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse my voice. I've done so much recording that I'm almost at a whisper now. Neptune has been in your fourth house of Pisces since 2011 and will be here until 2025. Neptune here can make you idealize your home or fantasize about a certain place you would like to live. You could find that you want to spend more time at home to relax and rest more, or maybe it's just your place of solace. Neptune here can also suggest decorating or beautifying your home, buying art or making art and music in your home. There can be more confusion in the home or disappointments or secrets. Or in some cases, you could lose your home or have a parent or family member abusing alcohol or drugs. Or someone could be ill and you could need to take care of them. Or somebody like a parent... Um, or a family member could be hospitalized during this transit. Or you could have been going through a time of great spiritual awakenings regarding your past and doing much psychological healing and forgiving. Otherwise, these issues will be triggered in order for you to deal with them and heal them. Therefore, this is a good period of tremendous inner change. And, there, and this is where um, endings must um, or everything really must begin with change on the inside before they can change in the outside. So the changes have to happen inside first. And this can be on a very deeply personal, emotional level. Your communications with a parent can become more difficult or lost or dissolve. A parent could pass away in rare cases. Um, this can be also a case where you might deal with an overdose or someone trying to commit suicide. In some cases, this is a period where you could feel your sense of security or well-being being not as secure, that you're unsure about the outcome of things. And this is where you learn to walk more by faith and not by sight. So this is a period where you will need to spend more time in prayer and spend more time asking guidance from above with your everyday dealings, especially at home or regarding parents. But it can be a deeply, deeply healing spiritual time as well. Now, Uranus has been in your sixth house of Taurus since 2018 and will be here until 2026. You may have been experiencing much changes, genius ideas, innovation and solutions, as well as unusual occurrences regarding your health, daily routines and life and responsibilities. This is an area of life that's being revolutionized for you now. And this will be an area of change until 2026. Now Uranus here can cause you to feel restricted in some way in your daily life, as if you cannot live the way you want to. And this can make you feel rebellious. Therefore, changing jobs more often or strongly considering it is possible. You will not be as willing to bow for others' demands here. You may feel out of control in your daily life. This transit, excuse me, will change your perspective and relationship to your everyday life and routines. You may have many life disruptions that cause you to change your schedule often, or maybe a lot of appointments you have to go to that sort of disrupt the flow of the day. 
You can feel disrupted and not very happy with your life and what it's become or your work or what you have to contend with on a daily basis. You're outgrowing parts of your life now. Someone else may have power over you and you could feel stuck. Your health may act up unexpectedly and you can become more accident prone with this transit. So be more cautious. Maybe you've been overworking, over worrying and over stressing and felt very unstable in your work or life or out of control in a way with others being at the, at the rain and the worry over responsibilities can maybe uh, manifest more physically here. You may have done too much for others and not enough for yourself and you're feeling drained now, pouring from an empty cup. In some cases, you can change your lifestyle and eating habits and experiment with new alternative diets or ways of living. But unusual routines and experiences in your life can occur now. You could be having to take new training or use new technology at work that's taking quite a learning curve. Um, You could find it challenging at first, fighting it at first, not liking it. It's important now to tackle obligations in a practical manner and to use your brilliant ideas here and to be creative and to try and allow room for change and new attitude. Let go of what needs to go and make the changes slowly so that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. This area of life is being revolutionized now, so you will no longer see your daily life, your sense of freedom, your health, as well as the present moment the same again. Remember that nothing is nothing that is for you can pass you by. So trust the timing of your life As every change promotes growth, nothing good ever came from stagnancy. But be in the moment and accept things for what they are and use your time wisely to work step by step towards a life you would rather live. Now Saturn has been pioneering through your third house of Aquarius for almost three years, paving the way for Pluto and will be ingressing Pisces, your fourth house, on the 7th of March, 2023, for almost three years. Now, Saturn here heightens personal detachment and can give you a more objective approach to everyday mind work. This is now in your third house where it's been, and it will be here until March. The way your mind operates day to day Your actual speaking, listening, and communication style can change or can become restrained in some way. So you may have felt more serious for the last two and a half years, maybe discouraged in some way, not good enough or sad or lonely or thinking about serious topics or just wanting to not really communicate much. In children, this can be a phase of maturity. You may not want to communicate at times or you simply cannot. You may be removed or at, or at more of a distance from siblings or neighbors or your usual neighborhood and friends. You could be looking for property or deciding on buying property or your family might. Maybe in an unusual location. You could be feeling as your life is not in your hands and you have no control over it. And therefore, it's important to take control of the things that you can so that you can feel better during this transit. Saturn here can affect your mood strongly. So some can find that they don't want to pay attention in a classroom environment or in a conversation. Your everyday habits need to change with Saturn here or it will happen anyway. So it could be good to restructure your way of thinking about things. You could be experiencing more difficulty getting along with others. Your way of thinking about things. You could be experiencing more difficulty getting along with others. But this is a time where you are coming to serious realizations. You have the power to shape your thinking now and the planning of your future. Serious decisions for some can happen here or serious studies. You could be studying online or more from a distance with this transit. 
Remember, if you are in the dark, you will know how to recognize the light more. So you will gain a lot of wisdom and understanding through this transit. Make sure you speak to someone if you need to, or if you feel overwhelmed or alone, you need to reach out. But this too shall pass, and your mental strength and agility is extremely strong now. But this is a time where you could feel quite alone. Now, Saturn will ingress Pisces from March in your fourth house. Saturn here heightens personal detachment and can give you a more objective approach to family, your home, your past, your childhood memories, a parent, and your innermost private world. You could be coming more disciplined in the home, wanting to streamline and get rid of what is unnecessary. This transit requires psychological work on your part, dealing with the past, dealing with forgiveness, in order for old issues to not control you any longer. You may need to deal with things or a person, an older person at times, a parent, maybe a father figure or someone that's ill that can be heavy on you, or it can add responsibility to your home life in some way, or you could be experiencing a period where you work from home. And a home is maybe not as much of a happy place at this time. Or... You could be detaching emotionally from a parent or you could separate from one or be at a distance from one or have much concern regarding them. A parent or authority or older figure can cause some kind of restrictive feeling or blockage in your home life. You are more ready now to declutter and make your home more practical and more your own, your own place, putting your stamp on things, restructuring things. You may find others may not approve of your choices or they could have resistance to these changes at first, but this is where you need to do you. You do have um, to be willing to put your unique stamp in this area. In some cases, with Saturn here, you could be a parent to someone for a while, regardless the inner emotional work you're doing now is worth gold, even if you don't feel it right now. Saturn works with delayed gratification. This is a great time, though, to free up issues from the past, to deal with any parental issues before it's too late, to fix whatever you need to fix in your home, to streamline, to budget more, to clean up and get organized in, and get things in order so that you can stop worrying so much about it mentally so it can become your safe haven and so that you can be more emotionally whole will also translate through all of your other relations, especially with family members at this time. I'm just going to take a sip of my tea here. Now, Jupiter is in Aries. In your fifth house until May 16th, when it enters Taurus, your sixth. And Jupiter here is great for starting a new business, turning a hobby into business, being creative, getting lucky, having more fun, and going on trips. So you could have more foreign or international interests. Jupiter here can bring more joy and optimism in your life, which is very much needed, especially after the long transit of Saturn in your third house. So some can also get pregnant with this transit or give birth. Some can meet a new lover that may be quite different than them or from another country or culture or possibly very well educated or just more wise. You may improve your relationship with your children if you have any or spend more time around children or with children. Maybe teach children. Jupiter here supports freely expressing yourself and growing in your com confidence, your self-confidence, your self-expression. It can make more of your interactions more pleasant. It's important now to not impose your beliefs on others, though. Jupiter will assist with inspiring tolerance. A child may perform very well in something here or achieve something great. You may feel proud of a child in some way. 
Um, and you will not want to hide from the world as much with Jupiter here. But do be cautious of being overbearing or dealing with um, exaggeration. This transit favors freedom, creative expression and blessings, love and romance. So a very beautiful transit. Then while in your sixth house, Jupiter will be there as of May. And Jupiter in Pisces can overall expand your kindness, but it can also exaggerate issues in your daily routines and in the workplace with this transit. Overall, it can indicate work that's much more enjoyable, a promotion or a blessing or a salary increase or working with a foreigner or with someone quite different than you or working in some educational field or with books maybe or some topic connected to travel or foreign affairs. It will be important for you to now be more careful in your daily environment of being used or misled in some way because your compassion increases. This can sometimes indicate a lot more work that is more creative though and enjoyable, but it's a big load. So make sure you're not overdoing it and that you're multitasking as well can be a big thing right now. Otherwise, if you don't take things in a more balanced or handle things in a more balanced way, you could get ill or you could allow for other um, health issues to grow because Jupiter expands everything it touches. So you want to make sure that this area is in balance for Jupiter to move through it so that it can expand the goodness. Your health is being highlighted here and your daily habits. So you want to ask yourself, am I drinking too much? Am I overindulging too much? Am I taking in too much sugar? How am I taking care of my liver? So pay more attention to these habits and maybe stay away from sugar and anything that can be too heavy on the liver. Detox more regularly and just take more care of your physical health. Because sometimes when you're in such a joyful everyday, um, you know, energy, um, you could be missing little details such as health points. In some cases, you could be teaching at work or have to speak publicly or do some kind of higher learning regarding your work. Or sometimes a child or children can become part of your daily routines or work. Jupiter here brings joy and blessing into your everyday life. There could also be more artistic endeavors, more dealings with art or music, more experimentation or the need for it, more adventure. And throughout this time, you will expand your perspective on life, on your health, your exercise, maybe swimming um, or spending making more time for free time or for creative self-expression with more self-assurance. Now, the 1st of June, Jupiter will conjunct the North Node in Taurus, which can bring powerful and fortunate connections, a lucky break, an opportunity to act towards your future, a healing of some kind, a financial blessing, or a change of modality of healing, or an ultimate release. And then Mars will begin the year in retrograde, so please check out my Mars retrograde in Gemini video. The link is in the description box. Um, it's a very long transit that Mars has had in Gemini. So it's been affecting everyone very strongly. So it's wise to listen to that video and also to the rising sign one specifically for you. Now, this will happen in your or is happening in your seventh house currently. At least if you're listening to this between December and January. This is your seventh house. Mars here gives a more future-oriented drive here. Freedom and adventure seeking and can bring arguments and discord in close one-on-one -on -one connections and spousal relations as well. You can experience more competitiveness here or selfishness, conflict or how you use this time. And this is a great time to work on the relationship though, or to work on a project together while working on the relationship, as well as maybe your communication. In some cases you can break up, in other you can start a new relationship now that's more physical. In some cases this can indicate legal action for some. Regardless, the tendency to act against one's own best interest can also rear its head. 
So take better care of your health and think before you act or operate machinery. You are rethinking your relationships and your partnering with Mars here. And also the energy you spend on your relationships and you may have to deal with more um, self-control and controlling anger more during this transit. Now, as of the 25th of March, Mars will be moving into your eighth house of Cancer. And this is where you can be reworking or thinking about your joint investments, resources, accounts, your spouse and their income, trust in general, possibly issues with the law or changes connected to um, litigation. Mars here gives you sort of like a do or die energy. This brings in topics of other people's money, taxes, loans, wills, legacies, working with those types of things or, or actually taking out a loan or arguing about joint resources or a joint bank account. This could indicate investing into something or starting a new partnership or ending one. This could indicate sex and intimacy that is profound and life-changing for you or that you are changing how you trust and how you approach intimacy or you may be rethinking your will and what you would like to leave behind one day financially but also your legacy, your imprint on others or a traumatic accident or event or person that completely changes your life or the way that you perceive it. So there can be a death and a rebirth in this area. But issues such as um, someone possibly um, buying something too expensive that's unnecessary out of the joint financial bank account is the type of arguments that can come up during this time. Mars will ingress into your ninth house of Leo as of the 20th of May. And here you could have been dealing with more intellectual work or have to defend your beliefs more. You may want to share your views with the world. You may want to travel or work abroad or publish something, study something or end studying something or start a business with a foreign connection like import or exports or um, take a trip. Maybe it involves work. You'd want to first check also with an astrologer if you can about your safety during this time because there would be more possibilities of accidents abroad. You may be more interested in researching the deeper meanings of life, such as religion, philosophy. You could desire to want to preach, or this could indicate in some cases a legal issue of some kind, or having to deal with, say, um, immigration paperwork or paperwork connected to something like travel or so. This can involve accidents abroad, like I mentioned, or actions involving the in-laws, your father, a teacher or a foreigner, your beliefs and your faith. Now from around the middle of May, the 21st of May, a few days after Mars ingresses Leo, your ninth house, Mars will oppose Pluto, which can indicate the potential for raw passion and intense sexual attractions, as well as the possibility of power struggles and arguments, competition and even violence. So keep that in your awareness and stay out of conflict or confrontation if you can. If you cannot avoid this, get assistance if needed. A few days after, Mars will square Jupiter in Taurus in the first few degrees, on which is a good time to forward new projects as long as you stay realistic and not overextend yourself. On the 26th of June, Mars in Leo will square Uranus in Taurus at 21 degrees, and it will be important to remember that new challenges need new solutions, not old ways. There can be a more restlessness here or a rebelliousness of wanting to break free from something or someone or a pattern of some kind. It will be important to notice the signs and create the change that you can systematically create in order to not completely throw the baby out with the bathwater, waiting until it's too late. You can be more accident prone now. It is important to work out physically, but safely. 
and be more careful using any kind of machinery or electricity. Now Mars will move into your 10th house of Virgo as of the 11th of July, where you've been working hard on something or where you will be working hard on something um, that you're more passionate about or where you may want to work um, on something that you strongly identify with. Mars here can sometimes indicate an independent project or working on something by yourself or for yourself. There can be more possibility of tension or stress in the workplace with a boss or in a group dynamic with Mars here. It can cause more conflict in some cases between co-workers as well as the public. It can also mean that you're just dealing with more resistance and um like a blocking of you moving forward in this passionate project. Some can decide now to quit or change jobs or positions or rather to work for themselves as it can feel as if your efforts are being put down. Emotional instability can appear now or emotional outbursts because this is quite personal for you. You can find you are naturally more selfish at this time or having to think more selfishly in order for you to get your work done. It is important now to be more cooperative if possible and to learn from any criticism you get, but you can make huge progress here if you avoid engaging in the opposition, but to rather have it fuel your determination to get the job done well. Rather just keep your mouth shut and get it done. Get the authority on your side and deal with the objections once you've accomplished your goals even if you do that just for yourself. For some, Mars here can have you go work um, more with the public or, or dealing with the public in some way, or you could have your work go more public or more viral in a way. Or you may end a partnership or leave a marriage or meet someone new or have a lot of um, tension and conflict between you and a, and a committed partner or a partnership maybe even while working. Either way, this transit can affect all areas of life, conflicts between home and career, partners, and your physical health, because it's angular. So this transit will keep you busy, but you'll be able to get a lot done. But you are more accident prone here, so think before you do, or speak, or drive, or take any risks, and take better care of your health. And everything I just mentioned could also be um, dealing or being part of something to do with a parent at this time. Now, Mars ingresses Libra in your 11th house on the 27th of August. And this is where you can be more actively formulating goals, um, rethinking them, and you may be actively pursuing them or preparing to do so. Your work is more geared towards the future with Mars here, and it can sometimes make it harder to work within a group dynamic or a team environment as you're more naturally selfish with a transit like this. You may have more tension or friction with a coworker or in group dynamics. So there's more chance of conflict between friends or groups that you belong to, um, even causes that you belong to or political affiliations. Therefore, working by yourself or more independently in some way can be better if possible. Focus more on being cooperative with others. This can be great for new inventive ideas, for group sport if you want to bond with people. You're acting more upon your future now and your work will have to have some kind of personal gratification to it. In the first week of Mars, I mean of October, <laughs> the first week of Mars. Oh my goodness. In the first week of October, Mars will conjunct the South Node in Libra and oppose the North Node in Aries. Also, while squaring Pluto in Capricorn. Now, Mars here can indicate withdrawing from physical confrontation. Your energy levels can feel more depleted. There can be more of a passive aggressive energy. It doesn't mean that there's no aggression. It could mean that this is just how you are reacting to it. But this can also indicate putting your gun down in relationships, a ceasefire or giving up on it, ending it or giving up on fighting 
or healing it and letting go of the habits that no longer work constructively for you. But there can be a cutting or a cutting in order to heal or just a stepping back in some way to relieve the tension. And this can be individual versus group, fun versus obligations, your me versus us, you know, friends or groups that you belong or associate with can change during this time. Now, Mars will ingress Scorpio in your 12th house on the 12th of October, where you can possibly be working more behind the scenes or more from a distance in the background or maybe remotely in a faraway place, or you're taking a break from work, maybe changing how you do things or taking a much needed holiday or a retreat somewhere, or you can work on your inner psychology, or maybe you are working more from home, like it could be like during a pregnancy and you're just sort of on maternity leave now. During Mars's transit here, you can find that your subconscious behaviors can come out in uncomfortable ways, creating strange experiences with people where you communicate in ways that they do not understand or you're trying to say something and it's carried over the wrong way or it's taken in the wrong way. You can make the wrong impressions much easier now especially if you're impulsive. So just pay more attention to how things are coming out. You can have secret enemies with this placement. Gossip and harsh words can be going on at this time. It is important to avoid upsetting situations and people now. If traveling overseas, you should be more careful as you could be more accident prone with Mars here. Self-sabotaging behavior can be brought up now to work on, such as unhealthy sexual obsessions, drugs or alcohol, or speaking badly about others. But this is a great time to go for therapy, to work on something by yourself, or to work on yourself, to ask yourself, where am I defeating myself? Because the subconscious behavioral patterns that we've built up from, from the time that we were children in order to survive and help ourselves cope with things can come up now and be triggered in some way. But this is a great time, therefore, to channel your pain and work on healing it, the emotional turmoil, any frustrations regarding home, or any frustrations um, that you've had regarding your childhood or anything that you've been dealing with. It's also a great time to actively help others, to volunteer, um, so that you can focus on others' pain rather, and that will help you to um, not be as focused on your own issues. And rather, and this will help you to better yourself and to heal your emotional wounds by becoming more whole yourself. This can also indicate love affairs and more sexual bed pleasures during this time. On October 29th, Mars will oppose Jupiter in Taurus, which can bring luck or favorable action. You may want to do more physically or in your one-on-one -on -one relationships, close relationships or business partnerships. Just make sure that you act without selfishness, that you stay within your means and not act foolishly. This is a time where you can give birth to a new kind of connection or partnership or a love affair, or you can take action towards addictive behaviors. On the 12th of November, Mars opposes Uranus and Taurus, and this can bring in a restlessness or a frustration, an emotional explosion of sorts, or a breakaway energy towards more freedom and independence. As you or towards you, or this is the final breakaway you've been waiting for, or a release um, and a victory, sort of a birth, but it comes with resistance and may not necessarily be easy. In some cases, this can indicate surgery or accidents. Therefore, make sure to exercise safely and to use motorized equipment and electricity with care and take care of your health during this time. Because these things can happen unexpectedly and suddenly wherever Uranus is involved. Expect the unexpected. This can involve unexpected financial topics, changes in close relationships, 
and business contracts or partnerships. This can also indicate a tension between co-workers, work and play, order and chaos. Mind, body, spirit needs to be more harmonized now. And then on October 24th, Mars will ingress Sagittarius in your first house of self, where you may feel more energetic, more assertive, and more action-oriented towards your approach and perspective on life and your identity itself. Mars here can bring an increase in energy, in libido, but also in aggressiveness and impulsiveness. So you can experience more energy fluctuations. In some cases, you can act more selfishly with Mars here. Or you can have a shorter fuse, possibly not as willing to cooperate or co compromise as much. Um, and this can happen very with you being very unaware of it. So just so you realize, it could be better, therefore, to rather work alone during this time if you can, or more independently. You'll want your own way more. Maybe have more arguments or confrontations, more sexual experiences, but you'll be able to accomplish a lot now. You're in more of a go-go mode. A new love interest or new work opportunity can present itself now, but you are more accident prone now, or you could, this could indicate surgery as well as more susceptible to health issues such as headaches or inflammation and, um, more nervous tension or issues with nerves and electrical impulses, burns, electrical and technological issues are more likely. So think before you speak, do or drive. It may also be a good time to check into the condition of your vehicle. But this is also a time where, yes, you could do some actual physical work during this time. Now, Mars will square Saturn upon its entry into Sagittarius at zero degrees of Pisces. And this can be frustrating in getting things done. The key is to work slow and steady and with consistent progress. Pushing it too hard right now will not be as effective. Some can experience a blockage in their forward progress due to fear of not being good enough. You need to face who you truly are with this transit and not take others' opinions as a validation of who you are. Mars in Sagittarius will square Neptune in Pisces on December 28th. And the year ends on this note where you could feel a bit discouraged or maybe not as happy with how something may have turned out. More doubt or inadequacy or just uncertainty maybe as the year ends in an area. Either way, Regardless of whether you made a wrong turn or a right turn, or if you're not sure of what turn to take, giving up is not an option now. Facing yourself, not others, and making the changes you know in your heart is right. It's a time to pray and listen to your intuition. You must not do anything devious in fixing a situation, and you must take better care of your health as you may feel more lethargic or ill with disappointment for some. Remind yourself that this too shall pass. And this is, of course, worst case scenario. In It can just simply be a small disappointment or something that's delayed or a confusion or a hospital visit or the need to speak to someone about something that's foggy for you or unsure. Um, do what you can and surrender the rest to God, but do stay away from anything that could be deceptive behavior. I will briefly go over the retrogrades and eclipse houses for the year, as I will possibly be going over them more in depth in the year to come and in more of their nature, closer to the actual events. Now, Mercury will be retrograding in all Earth signs this year. And this puts our focus more on practical solutions in our physical material world. But as of December 13th, 2022, until about February, we could expect more travel chaos, traffic issues, you know, political changes, um, communication issues, infrastructure um, issues, and so forth with Mercury um, being retrograde as well as Mars being retrograde. So 
Um, there can be a lot of reshuffling and unexpected miscommunications. But the 29th of December, 2022, Mercury retrogrades until the 18th of January in Capricorn from 24 degrees Capricorn to 8 degrees Capricorn. And this is in your second house. Now, every Mercury retrograde is a time where misunderstandings can happen, where there can be technology or conversations going haywire, emails going to the wrong person. But when Mercury retrogrades in Capricorn specifically, it's going to target Capricorn areas such as work, ambition, your marital status, your um, reputation, your career, you know, um, authority figures, parents, etc. Um, but in your case now, besides from these things that can also be affected, your second house is highlighted for this because this is where it's happening for you in your chart. So you could be looking at what you hold dear. You could be asking yourself, is, is your work really worth it? The energy you put into this. Um, you could be communicating more about your career and how you earn money or your um, investments at this time, what you really value in life. Are you happy with how you make money? Are you financially comfortable? Um, what would you really like to do? Um, you know, is it really worth it? Um, all of these types of things. Um, reviewing your budget um, and also reviewing how you spend money. Um, also your communications with fa with family at this time can also be a little bit wonky, um, but it could be a good time to, to, um, to start a new budget and to open up a savings account and sort of rework, um, your financial area and how you're using your skills and talents and how you are, um, mentally approaching your values what you do for a living and how you identify with these things. Now in your sixth house, Mercury will also retrograde from the 21st of April to the 14th of May from 15 degrees to five degrees. And you could be reorganizing your office or your desk. You could be re rescheduling a lot of things, reworking routines. Um, and so your daily routines can change a lot. Um, you can maybe have more doctor visits or just more appointments. Um, your communication and teamwork can can deal with a lot of um, miscommunication. So it's important to make lists now, write down things so you don't forget it. Um, allow yourself more time so that if there is things that jump out out of nowhere that kind of throws the whole day off, that you're flexible enough to still be able to efficiently get your work done. It's important now to deal with communication more directly. So if you're sending, you know, if you want to say something very important to someone, it's better now to just pick up the phone, make sure they hear you, make sure they get the message instead of emailing them and it may be not getting to them or it's being delayed or it goes to the wrong person or something like that. It's also good to now take an inventory of your, of your daily health habits and how you are neutrifying yourself and not just filling yourself. And um, so um, this type of thing is also important at this time. So you could be really rescheduling a lot of your daily, um, everyday life during this Mercury retrograde. And then Mercury will retrograde in your 10th house of career and life direction. And this is on the on the um, 23rd of August till the 15th of September. And this is from 21 degrees Virgo to eight degrees Virgo. So this is where you could be taking care of old businesses or old business in your work, um, finishing things that you haven't been able to. Um, you can sometimes um, have changes in your position or in your job or in your responsibilities here. There may be communication issues here with a boss or with a um, committed partner or a parent that can lead to frustration. Um, you could be reapplying for a job. Um, this is not a great time to apply for new positions or new jobs unless you've previously applied for it and maybe didn't get it. 
um, and you're reapplying for it, that's okay. But you don't want to start anything new with this transit. You want to finish up things, cross T's, really, um, you know, proofread work, um, make it better, make it more efficient and be, be more in a preparation and repair mode than in a new mode. And then you can go into new mode when Mercury is direct again. So you can spend this time more researching a career or, you know, go, going over thing, reconsidering thing, things, your, your public image, your um, direction in life and so forth. Um, so it's a great time also to um, take a break from work at times and spend more time at home, also recharging and so forth. So you're reorientating this area of life altogether. And this can also be where you may have your responsibilities change in regards to parenting. So maybe you're a new parent or, um, you know, you're just getting new responsibilities or a change in responsibilities in your life. Now on July 22nd till the 3rd of September, Venus will be retrograding in your ninth house of Leo. And during Venus retrogrades, we're rethinking style, beauty, our values, our self-worth, fairness, justice, choices. We're weighing options, partners, food, comfort, pleasure, what we desire, nature, money, balance in all areas, and also, of course, love. Now, with Venus retrograde in your ninth house, this is an area of life where you have usually been very set in your ways of beliefs and your vision for the future. So it's normally not very easy for someone to change your view on your philosophy on life, but this transit will throw a... Um, will throw something in there <laughs> that will have you questioning your beliefs possibly or maybe having to re-budget how you're going to get to the vision you have for your future. You could have a lot of inspiring dreams at this time, but this could definitely indicate also a change in your philosophy of life, a change in your religious beliefs, also a change in your um, cultural programming that you've had from childhood. So it is important that you want to stay open now um, to other options and to other views and perspectives on life and on authority as well as a father figure during this time because this is also the house that deals with your father, your in-laws, so this can also involve um, something that uh, changes or needs to be reevaluated financially in regards to your vision for the future or your dreams and your, your beliefs could be involved in this as well and your values. But it can all be connected also to, um, like I said, a father figure or in-laws. But there could be a financial redirection here or having to rethink how you're going to go about um, about this. But your values can definitely be um, revamped at this time. So you might change the way you see life from this transit on. So stay open and stay willing and see where you need more balance in this area. Because this transit will let you know that you are not in control. There is a higher power out there. Now, Mars will retrograde in Gemini from the 30th of October, 2022 until the 12th of January. So again, please check out my in-depth video about that in the description box, also the individual rising sign link. But in general, how are you using your energy? How is your drive? What are you putting your energy towards? Is it worth it? What are you getting out of it? Is it fulfilling? Are you listening to your body? What are you more passionate about? Now, this is happening for you in your seventh house, like I've said. So this is where you may have been more argumentative with a partner 
or where you may be reassessing how you handle conflict with other people or with another, maybe at work, but any one-on-one connections. Um, If you're not asserting yourself enough in a relationship, Um, This could be a good time for you to look at why this is happening, understanding yourself and the other more. So it is time to to work on your communication, your self-control, any anger issues. Um, Maybe you've been too hard on your partner or too demanding, and then you might need to step back a notch or it could be vice versa. Um, But this will be a time for you to really reevaluate this area of life and especially your ability to compromise when dealing with others Um, because this transit can make you um, really look at self-control, anger and selfishness. Now during Jupiter retrogrades we can be more in tune with the deeper meaning of life, deeper values and beliefs and we can want to connect more on a spiritual level. We have to work a little harder for our opportunities, but we benefit more on a spiritual level. We become more compassionate, more generous, and more inward reflecting on what's good and what's wholesome and what's true. So we can become more contemplative and try to do good and see good in others. But we must also be careful of not being used or being deceived or um, being too forgiving and being taken advantage of. Now, Jupiter rules your chart and therefore has more impact on you than possibly on um, most others. It will retrograde from the 4th of September till the 30th of uh, December from 15 degrees Taurus to 5 degrees Taurus in your 6th house. Now, this is a time where you want to honor your body. You want to focus on your well-being. It's a good time to rethink your diet or exercise programs, your daily schedules, your daily habits, because that's those little daily things we repeat day to day are what forms us. It's what feeds our cells. It's what grows our bodies over time. I don't know if you've ever heard of how they say, you know, it takes seven years for you to grow everything, you know, for, for your whole body to be replaced and things like that. So everything has a, has a time period of replenishing. So if you think about that and how powerful that is, and when people say you are what you eat, um, I of course disagree. I feel you are what you digest. Um, but this is very important. Um, so this can also be a time where you want to investigate alternative health therapies or complementary therapies or you can create your own opportunities with Jupiter here whether it's work whether it's health related um, whether it's got to do with a child um, more abundance um, by by manifesting a healthier you Um, because if you're healthy you can affect everything else in a healthier way as well So you want to focus on body, mind, and soul healing modalities that's holistic and that's going to reach every part of you, not separating parts into compartments. Now, usually during a Saturn retrograde, we're reminded of reality, the aspects of life we cannot avoid, rules, responsibilities, length of life, taxes, restrictions, authority, time itself, commitments, etc., Now, Saturn will retrograde from 17 January till the 4th of November, from 7 degrees to 0 degrees Pisces in your 4th house. And this is a time where you may be finding that your family or a loved one um, could need your support more or your protection more. Um, Maybe there's someone that just... um, just needs more love at this time or more protection. Um, So it might not be very harmonious. Um, There can also be a feeling of um, separateness or a loneliness for some um, or some kind of sadness. So there could be just a need for you to um, be more loving and kind and to use your intuition here and see where you can be of help. 
Um, sometimes this can affect your own most innermost emotional feelings, your innermost world. So it's important to also um, practice self-love during this time. Now on the 20th of April, there will be an annular total solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries in your fifth house. And like I said, I will be going over the eclipses and their natures more in depth in the coming year. I'm just touching on them now. And it's important to remember that they're activated during this time, but that they can unfold and start to unfold six months prior to six months after and also longer periods of time, depending on what eclipse it is and how it's being affecting, how it is affecting your chart. So this one is in your fifth house of Aries, and this can be a new beginning or a new intention or a change in the area of children, a romance, fun, creative expression, a self-made business. You could get a lucky break or get pregnant or give birth or start a new relationship, a new way of having fun and a new way of just being you. You could turn your hobby into a business or you could have a really amazing breakthrough with a child or a child could have an amazing blessing or breakthrough during this time. Now on the 5th of May, there will be a penumbral lunar eclipse at 15 degrees of Scorpio in your 12th house. And this is an ending or a completion or something that's that you are releasing or giving birth to or um, just something coming to completion, to fruition. And this can this is in the area of mental health, self-sabotage, and un self-undoing as well. So you could end an addiction, a secret love affair, or a lazy tendency. You could be checking out of a hospital, or finishing a treatment, or a therapy or counseling session of sorts. A creative project such as a poem or lyrics or a pregnancy could end a gestation period of something. Um, you could be finishing time abroad or time away, or maybe you were um, um, just not working for a while and that period is finishing now, or a period of seclusion or loneliness can come to an end. A period of grief could finish. Now on the 14th of October, there is an annular solar eclipse at 21 degrees of Libra in your 11th house. And this is new beginnings that can be connected to your future goals or ideas, a new seed of intention, new friends or mentors or a benefactor. You can learn new technology or acquire it to assist you with your plans moving forward. You could begin a new membership or a group or affiliation of some sort. There can be changes in the area of colleagues and peers at your work. Uh, maybe you're working in a different area, um, but these can all be possible manifestations. Your work responsibilities could change as well, as well as your business income. There can also be changes in requirements or legislation regarding some kind of paperwork or maybe a certification that you want to get done. Now, on the 28th of October, there's a partial lunar eclipse at five degrees Taurus in your sixth house. And this is an ending or a culmination or a fruition in the area of health and your daily work routines and schedules. So you may experience changes in your health, your habits, your schedules, your co-workers, those that work under you, your tenants, your employees. You may change from going to the gym to doing yoga at home or quitting a job or changing positions. You may stop eating dairy or, or make some other dietary um, change, but your daily responsibilities will change here. And um, yeah, I think that's it for the eclipses. Well, thank you for listening, Sagittarius. You are restructuring your career, your life path and daily life responsibilities changing health habits, adding joy and children in the daily, you are growing in creative self-expression in 2023. Well, may the sun shine bright on you this day. May there be blessings coming your way. May you have a wonderful 2023. Until next time. Bye-bye.